As a doctor, you'll have to give bad news to patients and their families more than you'd like. But if you don't have a great system on how to have these tough conversations, it can quickly become a disaster for everyone involved. Unfortunately, during my training as well as in attending, I've seen way too many poor examples of hard conversations gone wrong. So today I'm gonna break down the system that I've used for the past five plus years that make these tough moments a lot easier and even may have the patient and their family thanking you at the end. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In case you're new here, my name is Laksham, a former internal medicine hospitalist, currently at second year cardiology fellow, and this is a long overdue episode because this is probably one of the most underrated skills of being a physician or a healthcare provider, which is how in the world do you have tough conversations confidently to where you can walk into a room, deliver bad news, such as unfortunately you have a terminal illness, there's no more medical treatments that I can offer you, you or your loved ones, or unfortunately things are just getting too worse that even the treatments that we have available to you are not something we can offer. Those are just a few examples of tough conversations you're gonna have as a healthcare provider, but unfortunately not everyone gets taught on how to do this. And I remember when I was in medical school, I think out of three out of four years, we'd have to practice with fake patients on how to have tough conversations and deliver news such as you have terminal cancer, I can't save your mom, X, Y, and Z. And I always wondered like, why in the world do they keep making us do this? Like, I don't need somebody to teach me how to talk to patients in reality super helpful. The system that I learned in medical school is the exact system that I use today to give bad news and it's made me a lot more confident in the process. So we're going to break that system down into four steps and the four steps are going to be understand, deliver, expect, and recommend. Now step number one is to understand the foundation. Before you go into any room and before you go into any situation delivering your news, maybe it's somebody has a new bad diagnosis, a worsening diagnosis, a lack of treatment options, maybe you just want to discuss code status because things aren't looking so great, you need to just understand the atmosphere of the room. If the patient is with it and they're alert, oriented, and able to make discussions, then that's the main person you're going to have conversations with. Unfortunately, a lot of times the patient may be too sick or maybe in a situation where they're intubated or just not able to respond, or you may have to go to their decision makers. But the first thing that you need to do before you give tough news and tough updates is you have to understand what do everyone else in the room understand to be true currently. So the one line that I love using is whether it's to the patient or the main decision maker, look them in the eyes and say, what do you understand that's going on right now with your health? It's a very broad statement, but it allows you to quickly feel the atmosphere of how in tune is the patient and or their loved one with their medical conditions. Are you in one of those situations where the patient now understands exactly what's going on, all the information they've been given from nurses and other providers seems to be sticking? Or are you in a situation where somebody thinks that they are doing a lot better than perhaps they really are or has no idea medically where they are currently? You'll have those situations, unfortunately, where patients are just very medically illiterate, maybe poorly updated, have some cognitive deficiencies where they're just not able to understand what's currently going on. But those two situations put you on different sides of the spectrum on how to give bad news. If a patient really understands what's going on, it's very easy, you just go to the second step. If it seems like there's a big discrepancy in terms of understanding and reality, then it requires a lot more education on your part. So again, the first thing that I do when I walk into a room is you tell me what you've been told and how you think your body and health is currently doing. Step number two is deliver the news. And there's no point in sugarcoating bad news because it just causes a lot of confusion, especially if you're trying to be wishy-washy with the news you're delivering. It leads to a message of, am I as sick as maybe the doctor made it out to seem, but perhaps or not. So for example, if I had a patient who I thought was possibly going to pass away and I had no medical treatments for them, I'm talking to them or I'm talking to their family members, I'm going to say, because of A, B, and C, I am very concerned that your body is not going to be able to make it through this. That example is exactly kind of what you should try to aim for, which is quick and simple. Give the news and we'll go into step three, which is you're going to process all the motions and reactions you're going to have to that, but you just don't want to sugarcoat or dance around it. If somebody has a new terminal illness, say, I saw something on your imaging, it looks like you, unfortunately you have life-threatening cancer. Your heart conditions that we've been working with, we have no other options and your heart is doing much worse. I'm worried, unfortunately, that we have no other options for your heart. But the most important part about the step is be simple, be direct, and give the news as quickly as possible. As a pro tip, if you're in one of those situations where you feel like the family or the patient is just not understanding it and there's a lot of medically that's going on, I like to use the analogy or the metaphors of dominoes, where I say that each organ system that we're having to support is a major domino that's currently down. Perhaps neurologically the patient's not doing well, maybe their blood pressure's not doing well, maybe they're infected, maybe they're not breathing well from a respiratory perspective, maybe their kidneys are down, they're needing dialysis, maybe their heart's not doing so well. All of these are dominoes, and each individual domino is not a great sign for a patient, but the more dominoes that are currently knocked down and require us to use interventions to pick them back up, to try to get back to a normal state of 
of health is very difficult, becomes more and more unlikely. Patients and their families I've found have used that analogy to quickly understand, oh wow, this person is really sick. And even if they can support the kidneys, maybe their heart and their brain's not doing so well. That helps make the future steps that we're about to do a lot simpler. Step number three is expect the emotion. Regardless of what spectrum you think the patient may be on, maybe they're very calm and collected versus somebody who's very confused, you may get a variety of emotions. But you have to expect the emotion, which is really why it's so important to just give the news, take a second, and if there's a long pause, that is completely okay. Everyone processes bad news differently. Some people get very angry. Some people look like they may not be reacting enough and you just have to be able to expect the motion. Perhaps you are going to get pushback from family members and patients saying, are you giving up on me? Perhaps you're gonna push back on your medical competency on making that call. All of those are coping mechanisms of anyone being told that, hey, there's no other options left or something doesn't look very good. And as hard as it is, your job at this point is not to try to fight back and prove yourself, but just say, I understand and this is scary. I understand this is frustrating. Whatever emotion you're getting, relate that back and say, I can see that this is frustrating, this is scary. But unfortunately, because of A, B, and C, this is the situation that we're in so far. This is probably the hardest part about giving bad news is that most doctors put themselves into this deathly circle where they feel like they're competing against the family member to get the last word in. Remember, your job at this point is to deliver news and ultimately give a recommendation on what we should do next for that patient and the family. And so you can't be stuck in this part where you're constantly fighting all the things that may be said at you or kind of pushback you're gonna have, expect those and instead confirm the emotion that comes and ultimately go back to the bad news that we're at. And then finally, step number four, most important, is to make a recommendation. There's no point if you give bad news and then just leave the patient and their family hanging on what to do next. Perhaps the next step is just to say, look, your body doesn't look so great right now. We have a few options here and there. I just am not confident that's going to work well. I think we need to discuss your code status because if your heart and lungs stop, for example, intubating you and doing CPR is not likely gonna be the best move knowing that we have so much more room to go and the chances of that happening are very low. Just having a code discussion and still saying we're gonna do everything we can in the meantime is completely reasonable. Sometimes saying we don't have to make a decision right now, I say we see what happens in the next 24 hours and then we sit down and have a discussion again about discussing code status is also an option. And sometimes it's completely normal and acceptable to say look, this doesn't look good. This patient, for example, if you're talking to their family member, looks very uncomfortable. In these situations, I don't see this going in the right direction. They look very uncomfortable. I think we need to focus on improving their comfort. But ideally at this point, you kind of understand which part of the fence they're in. Maybe they are not sure about what you said. Maybe they need more time to process. Maybe they are completely on board, which sometimes I've been shocked by families where I've given bad news. I've just met them maybe 10 minutes ago. And they're like, you know what, doc, we trust you. We see this too. We're concerned about how mom's doing, for example. I think we should transition to hospice. What's the next step? And we move a lot quicker in those processes to make sure the patient is comfortable compared to what I was expecting. Everyone is going to be on a different sense, but give the recommendation and just like before, engage and assess the emotions that come with your recommendation. If they're unsure, then give kind of steps. Maybe we can touch back again later in the evening. If there's more family members that you need to talk to, if there's people that need to be here, you know, play the situation situation now, but now that you've given the bad news and you've given your recommendation, your job is to really just work with the family and get as flexible as possible in the situation that you have. And then finally, step number five, it's not really part of our spectrum, but really just understand that this is a process. Don't feel like your job as a physician is to convert people's code statuses. That is by no means what we should be doing. Your job is to give a recommendation and to have the family trust you to make that transition. Some families are going to be very difficult to work with. Perhaps somebody is very clear from your medical expertise that they need to be, do not not resuscitate, they need to be comfort care because you've seen this hundreds of times and no one has made it out of it where they're on four pressers, lots of infections going on, maybe they're brain dead, they're not neurologically doing very well, and the family wants you to do everything seems unreasonable, but that family is making that decision and they're the decision makers and your job is to give the recommendation, constantly have a conversation of where their foundation is of what they understand to be holding true, why you're giving that recommendation in the first place and constantly trying to build that trust. Some people, again, will be very quick. Others is going to be a process. It's going to be frustrating at times, 100%, but if you go through that system, you will have more instances than that where you can go into a situation with confidence, walk out with the assessment of this is where this family or this patient is, and it's going to take an X amount of effort or it's going to be very straightforward. That guys is my simple yet effective system where I can go into any situation, whether I know the patient very well or I just know their clinical status from their note and have to have a tough conversation in the middle of the night with them or their family members. It's led to a lot of family members, a lot of nurses, especially who have kind of paid attention to the conversations to say, I really appreciate how you had that conversation. 
It's made this process a lot easier. And that's what you want as a physician. You don't want a family member to remember the hospice conversation with their mom or with their parent or their grandparents to be this awful kind of terrific experience with a physician. You want it to be something that they just don't remember at all or something that just felt it was a natural conversation and everyone was making a decision together. And ultimately, it was their decision and your recommendation. If you enjoyed this episode, just quickly hit that like button. It really just supports the channel. It's the best way to help me get these videos and episodes in front of more people that possibly will help. Hit that subscribe and notification bell if you found this to be helpful. If you want more help on your medical journey, tons of free resources linked down below, including our Med School Success Handbook, which is filled with tons of tips for your medical journey, as well as my eight-step study program that I use. That I'll give to you guys for absolutely free. And then some of our kind of step-by-step -step programs and coaching programs are also linked down below in case you're interested. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, you'll probably enjoy this episode right here on my full day in the life as a cardiology fellow, as well as this episode right here on all the study strategies I use to ultimately get a 3.9 GPA in med school. Enjoy these. And as always, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. Hopefully today I was a little help to you guys on yours. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.